Today we have with us Mr. James Glover from UK. He has more than 30 years experience in the study and teaching of Vedic mathematics. Namaskar sir. I welcome you to our special Sanskrit program Parthavali. Thank you. Mr. Glover, at very first I want to know what attracted you to Vedic mathematics? Well, it, that was a long time ago. It was in the mid-1970s. And the famous book, Vedic Mathematics, by Shankara Acharya Sri Bharati Krishna Charita, was published about 10 years previous to that. Okay. And it was through my interest in Advaitic philosophy, through the School of Economic Science, in, okay. based in London, yeah. that I first hit upon Vedic Mathematics of the Shankara Acharya. So I began to study it, and what was very attractive about it was a, that it is a unifying and a very holistic system. What are the similarities and uh, differences between today's mathematics and Vedic mathematics? All of today's mathematics uh, has sutras behind it. So Vedic mathematics is not exclusive. It is not that there are two systems of mathematics. That is wrong thinking. Yes, Vedic mathematics has some alternative methods of calculation, but that is only one part of what Vedic mathematics is. When you solve a mathematical problem, you, there is a thinking process going on. Now, what it, by whatever means you do it, there will be a sutra, if you do it this way, mm -hmm. another sutra behind your thought process, mm -hmm. if you do it that way. It doesn't matter whether you're using one of his methods or you're just using conventional maths. So, for example, Paravarcha Yoja Yate is one of the sutras. It says, transpose and adjust. When you divide a number by a fraction, you flip the second fraction and change the sign to a time sign. Right. This is transpose and adjust. Paravarcha Yoja Yate. Another, yes. Another application is when you move terms from one side of an equation to the other with the inevitable change of sign, transpose and adjust. But also you find the same sutra working in many, 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 many different areas. And what's really fascinating is that these different topics, the underlying thought process is the same, and therefore those different topics become connected, not because they are logically connected, but because they are intuitively connected. Mr. Glover, as it is known that the concept of zero, this is the uh, Indian contribution to the world. Are there any other contributions? Uh, yes, uh, zero is one of the most important, but there are many others. And the first uh, one, is the nine numbers. Nine numbers, yes, of course. And the whole concept within the nine numbers. You see, numbers are made of these nine and the zero. There are only nine numbers and the zero. Yeah. Bigger numbers are made up of these. Each of these nine numbers is a single entity. Yeah. It is a unity. Mm. And one perspective is that there is one. Yeah, one. Two is another one. Mm three is another one, yeah. and so on. So the big contribution of India is the zero and the nine numbers. numbers. And then the place value system, mm. which is a brilliant invention yeah. because it enables us to do calculations. Mm. Uh, the place value system of hundreds, tens, units, decimal point, yeah. and so on. There are many other uh, contributions uh, of Indian mathematics, which are not, uh, which are potential contributions, they're not well known about. Um, As for example, yeah. there is a huge amount of mathematics untapped yeah. in Sanskrit mm -hmm. from the Kerala School of Mathematics, mm -hmm. and some of the work at the Sanskrit Faculty of the IIT in Bombay, mm -hmm. in Mumbai, yeah. is working on this to release some of the, the knowledge that is there. But it is also well known that the um, classical Indian mathematics dealt with or uh, discovered 
uh, don't know what the right word is, areas of mathematics such as trigonometry, trigonometry. elementary calculus, yeah. the so-called Pythagoras' theorem, the so-called Pascal's triangle, the binomial theorem, many, many areas.